the Mind Buzz, now partnered with My Grito Industries. This podcast episode of the Mind Buzz is brought to you by House of Chingasos. House of Chingasos is a Latino owned online store that speaks to Latino culture and Latino experience. I love House of Chingasos because I like t shirts that fit great and are comfortable to wear. I wear them on the podcast and to the carne asadas. Click the affiliate link in the show description and use promo code the mind buzz. That's T. I don't know why it keeps on uh, stopping right there. M I N D B U Z Z to receive ten percent <laughs> off your entire purchase. The cash saved will go directly to the Mind Buzz podcast to help us do what we do best, and that's bringing you more. Mind Buzz content. Click the link in the show description for more. <laughs> Mind Buzz is powered Dude, by I, Mind Buzz. I like how media. the ad is playing. Mind Buzz and Media is an it's not working. video and audio podcast. The ad is not working. Company. About have you ever thought about Buzz. starting your own video That's and terrible. audio podcast, or do you have an existing professional that ladies you want to take to the next level? Mind Buzz Media brings a professional podcast studio to you. Visit MindBuzz.org. For more. Miche. Michelada Rumble in the city of Santa Anita. That is right. Michelada Rumble everything. Michelada Rumble. Amber and I are going to be out there May 4th judging the Micheladas. It's going to be awesome. May 4th. Hosted by the funny man, comedian, George Perez. The Mind Buzz. Welcome to Mind Buzz Universe. Boom. What is up, Mind Buzz Universe? Welcome back to another episode of the Mind Buzz buzz podcast part of the my grito podcast network my name is gil i am your host and working the boards behind this screen that you guys can't see amber what is up what are you doing <laughs> why do you talk to me like donald trump amber <laughs> he doesn't talk like that like a <clears throat> like a chiquiado a chiquiado yeah i'm gonna start doing the the baby talk that i talk to you <laughs> I'm going to start doing that on stage, like a chiquiado character. I wonder if anybody oh does that right now. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm excited. I had uh, an, a Celsius way too late. Um, no affiliation. Um, but Celsius, if you are watching and if you are listening, please consider the mind buzz. Because uh, I drink this stuff way too often. Okay. There you go. How's your That's- eyes? That's my cry for help. My eyes. Yeah. Oh, from the freaking eclipse. They the eclipse. <laughs> proper eyewear. I had I have eyewear on right now every day. You can't use regular sunglasses. No, who says no. not? Science. Ah. I Come was on. over there with my cereal box. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dude. Cereal box. That was actually pretty. Hey, but I didn't burn my freaking eyes. Pretty cool. Uh, was it yesterday? So I I popped a blood vessel last night. Was it last night? I don't know. Did you? Yeah, when I when I was on the phone with when we were on the phone with Jay and we were coming home oh, and I was laughing. I do. I was laughing so hard that my eyes were getting. They were like getting really itchy. And like sweaty, I felt like I had sweat in both of my eyes, and I was laughing so hard, and it was and burning. Was and I was on the freeway. We we're on the six hundred five uh, west east. See, and you're always joking, so I thought you were joking. So I thought I was safe, and now no, you weren't joking, no, <laughs> and I wasn't eyes, safe. My eyes were burning, and I got home, and uh, my blood vessel was like popped. And I was like cool i don't think that's laughing i think that's a uh, high blood pressure is it yep uh, i'm pretty sure <laughs> <laughs> but i got i i got the high blood pressure because of laughter 
Oh, maybe. Laughter is the, the best medicine for that. <laughs> okay. It, 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 it causes the, the, I don't know. I got nothing on just, that. Just leave it at that. I got nothing. <laughs> I'll leave it. I'll leave it to that. Uh, tomorrow, our open mic, Poodle Laughs in the City of Paramount. Sign up start at 7.30. Show starts at 8. Amber, do you have anything this week? I do not. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. All taking right. a break this week. Taking a break this week? I'm taking a How break. How was your pet pop up? Was that awesome? Oh, you guys cool. totally missed it. If you didn't come check it out at uh, Orchatheria, pet pop up, lots of dogs hanging around. It was cool. That was fun. That was cool. I feel like people judge me because I do that event and I don't have pets. Yeah. Somebody asked me, uh, <laughs> one of the vendors was like, Have you gotten a dog yet? <laughs> it was the second time doing it. She's like, have you gotten a dog yet? And I was like, I haven't. That's like the people that have uh, daycares that don't have children. <laughs> there you it's go. It's similar, right? Yeah, except less creepy. <laughs> less creepy Less creepy. Uh, cool. So we got that out of the way. Are you ready to get into today's guests? I am. All right. He is a very funny man. He is the producer of the Roast Tournament at the Ontario Improv Comedian. Adrian Luna is in the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, what's up, dude? How's it going, man? What's up, man? Thanks That's for being here. Much, Appreciate man. it, dude. Thank you. Thank you for having me, dude. This is sick, dude. I like your setup, dude. Thanks, man. I really like it. I dig it. It took three years. It's three years in the making, dude. Um, with shit like this, it's just you just accumulate until you're ready. And then once you're ready, you have everything. And then you start surprising yourself. It's like, oh shit, I did. I, I saved that for a reason, you know? Yeah. I have so much equipment and I've moved a few times over the years that I lost some, but I kept like the core shit that I need. So yeah. I still have everything I need. Did you say horchataria? Yeah. yeah. That's sick. What is that? That's the coffee shop. That's your coffee shop? Yeah, yeah, the coffee shop we were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah but that's it. Yeah. you can't tell me the name was Horchata. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what else do you guys have? <laughs> we have horchata, coffee, churros. Um, we bake all our own bread. Um, we incorporated a concept for lunch, and it's called birote, and it's all like fusions between like Mexican and like other... Um, I guess like other sandwiches. That's fucking um, amazing, But it's sandwiches. Yeah. And then we do events there. So it's it's a huge location. So it's a... Yeah, you had told me that you place. you guys opened something up and you didn't tell me how fucking awesome it was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, That's what I was like. First of all, the name. Got him. Already. <laughs> We're like, uh, uh, just some coffee shop, some dude. Coffee shop. We just added beer and wine. Uh, we have 20... We have 20 handles at the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're just getting, trying to sell out some more of the beer so we can, uh, widen the, uh, selection for I have that. my personal sommelier, so I'll, I'll get you guys in contact with him. Oh. You guys can probably do some business. He's a really reliable, really great guy. And what is this? Sommelier? Sommelier. He's a, well, I call him a sommelier, but he's a wine merchant. He, he hawks wine is basically what he Oh, does. really? Yeah. Oh. Just a, he's just a, he's a piece a of shit. fancy work. A, yeah, he's a piece of shit, actually. I hate <laughs> him. Yeah. Fuck you, Johnny. <laughs> sommelier. Yeah. Yeah. That sounded pretty cool. I like that. Is that a thing? A yeah. small answer thing. You can yeah. Google it that, that's their, that, that's <laughs> like the title. Oh, is it? Yeah. 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 Uh, Did I just drop some vocabulary on you, dude? Yeah, dude. That's <laughs> wild. <laughs> word of the day. Word of the day. Word of, we need a button for word of the day yeah. or Spanish word of the day. Sommelier. That's not Spanish. No? <laughs> no. no. Do you speak Spanish? Fuck no. No? No. I'm Mexican from Kansas. <laughs> Mexican from Kansas. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, my Were grandpa you... was from uh, Morelia. Mo- Morelia? Oh, yeah, Michoacan. Michoacan, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he just started banging some chick in Kansas. And, <laughs> my dad, and then I'm here now, and I'm in California. So, like. <laughs> yeah. Were you born in Kansas? I was born in. Well, my mom got knocked up in Kansas, and I was born in. East you're, conce- you're conceived in Kansas, yeah. but born in East Los Angeles. Yeah, Montebello. Montebello. Beverly Hospital. Oh, okay. Which is crazy because it's fucking crazy, dude. So my mom and dad used to go to comedy shows all the time at Montebello at this place that's across the street from the hospital I was born at. They would always see Jeff Garcia there, Rudy Morello. They would always see all these comics coming up there. And it kind of came full circle because last year I did a show with Jeff Garcia. And it's like they were 
they're they're fans of comedy, so they were watching Jeff Garcia when in the formative years, and then Damn. now that he's a legend in the game, I'm able to do his shows, and then I know I'm on a like, like I have his number, dude. I'll call him if I need anything, and he oh, he answers. Cool. It's fucking sick, dude. Damn, <laughs> it's really man. dope, actually. Full circle, man. Full circle, dude. Damn, yeah. that's cool that your parents are into comedy. Oh yeah, yeah, they got me into comedy. Oh, they did. They got me into comedy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, uh, of course the classics, you know, um, Eddie Murphy, uh, fucking raw and everything. But where I fell in love with it was George Lopez. Why are you crying? Oh yeah. It is. It was on loop at our house all the time. Oh yeah. And it was, a. It, we were the party house. So like when people would come over, it would be on there. Like, what the fuck did you just say? Was like, we're going to watch it again after this. Don't worry about it. And then it was just constantly repeated and, was that before or after he did the Latin Kings of Comedy? Do you know? That Can has we look to be that before. Up? That yeah. has to be before. I think so. It might not have been. I don't know. Did you ever watch Gay Locos growing up? No. Oh, dude. Gay Locos was on, uh, it was probably on Cali I don't know what the fuck. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was late night. They had people like Joey Diaz, Gabriel Iglesias, fucking. They had people on there that were just killers. And it was on late at night, like 1130. And I would stay up just to watch that. And fuck man some of the best shit some of the best shit and it was on a um it was on like regular like a spanish tv i'm pretty sure it was yeah, yeah. right yeah yeah yeah. Get Dude, locals. yeah that shit was sick man Whoa. that's that's the old school I, at least i could say la type shit like cause that's that's where because very i talk to people and they know about it but some people like you don't you don't know about it yeah but um yeah dude that shit was fire was uh oh, is, is. is this the same show that alfred robles was talking about was alfred robles on this that show that show was that or was, or he probably watched it too he probably watched i think it. he said he watched it. he watched it huh yeah because i think he was too young to be on it mm. yeah oh so it was like that oh dude back was, in the day it was back in the day, day bro it was like what like late 90s mm. early 2000s it was when, it's late yeah it's late 90s it was when uh, what's his George Lopez had a sick ass mullet, dude. Yeah, you see that? <laughs> yeah, I used to watch Gay Locos and uh, Dessert Circus with Jacques Pepin. Dessert Circus. Yeah, dude, look that one up. Dessert Circus was fire, dude. Yeah. Jacques Pepin, he's a fucking killer ass chef. Really? Dessert oh. chef. Oh, he was a dessert chef. Yeah, yeah. This is just like shit I watched when I was little. It was either cooking or comedy. Which, Hell yeah. Which is all I do is eating. <laughs> tell jokes now, so. so there's a timeline of where fuck i live where my life came from hell yeah dude when did you first start doing stand-up so i tried in 2012 but um but like dude always making people laugh always mm -hmm. like cracking jokes and shit and uh started podcasting with my buddies and shit and i was kind of like the funny guy they would bring shit up yeah dude that's my motherfucking g right there. jacques torres jacques, jacques. <laughs> Like, okay <laughs> dude that shit was fun anyways yeah. um always uh just making people laugh so i'm like you know what fuck it i'll just give it a shot in 2012 i had jokes some of the jokes i tell now were jokes i wrote back then and um and i just didn't had stage presence i hated hearing my voice all this other shit mm. but um also i felt like i didn't have any fucking right being on stage at 21 i didn't feel like I had a view on life or anything, but all these years past, dude, I've had a kid. I've been to jail twice. I've like lived like through some shit. So I think I can, I have like a clear scope where I can just talk about shit that I've experienced and it's relatable to people. So in 2012, that was the first time you hit a stage, an I open hit, mic? I hit open, but well, like, um, yeah, yeah. Because I've, I've always wanted to be on stage in some form or another. Yeah. Like, um, and then, um, podcasting was really big for me and then i had my own podcast where i'd go out and interview people oh nice which was fucking dope like i, I ended up really liking interviewing people because um whether it's you know what they want to talk about what they don't want to talk about the experiences and bringing shit up like just in a regular conversation i always like digging and finding out what what, what are you really like you know mm -hmm. and uh i was interviewing people at like kickboxing events oh that's um, dope like comic-con and stuff i went to a doll con that shit was dope I interviewed a uh, amputee Brittany, who, who had uh, <laughs> yeah, she she had people. I paid. haven't even heard. I haven't heard of her name since for a long for a long time already. Did yeah, yeah. So you know who she is? I've seen pictures of her. Can oh you shit! Pull up a. Uh, oh my god! Come on, yeah, do it. 
Well, you didn't even really know what hentai was. Pull it up. So you're not too vanilla. No. No. Pull and, it up. Yeah, she would. I told her like, what's the craziest thing? Like, you did. She's like, well, someone paid me like three hundred bucks to stomp a cake with my nub. <laughs> I'm like, dude. <laughs> like, I can get off on anything, but I can't even get off on that. On the cake. I can get off on the cake. <laughs> Cream filled. Amputee Brit. I if this is the okay yeah, yeah. that's her. yeah okay I I've seen her in like some Not top bad, ten actually. Amputee Britney dude Where is some weird Brit? top ten video. Oh my god. Yeah, you see that? Yeah. You know, don't put it's it on the, the screen because we're not, gonna get kicked I'm out <laughs> of the live. I'm okay. not. You're good. <laughs> so you were able to interview her yeah. at Adult Con. Oh, she was great. Really? So how long ago was this? Oh, pre-COVID. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. So you were like mobile, doing interviews like yeah, on yeah. on site. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. It's it was cool, man. But like that shit's so blown up and saturated, oversaturated on TikTok now. Or right like, now, yeah, yeah. It's like I would yeah. love to do that. Trust me, I would love to do on the yeah. street interviews. But shit's whack. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of oversaturation, even from some of the comics that I heard that it's like oversaturated too. Like just even. Just in general, I think because of the way the temperature of uh, social media is now, it's so easy to, to, there's, it's more accessible, right? Anybody can hop on their phone. That's the worst part about it. And create a, a, be a content creator. Yeah. But I, there, there's a certain piece of you that, like, I, I feel like, yeah, anybody can do it. Mm -hmm. But it takes a certain person to keep consistent at it. That's true. That's right. True. There is like, a, there is discipline is the biggest yeah. one of the biggest things. But you can be not doing anything and still be disciplined. Like there's people that just re-upload shit. But the reaction content is the fucking worst. I hate that <laughs> shit. Reaction content is like so dog shit. Like what? Which ones are? Which one is that? Like where they'll just be playing the video and the video. Oh funny, yeah. But they're just like the whole time. Like it's like bitch. Yeah. They're, they're getting money off of it yeah that's the worst even the the clips of like rogan and all those huge podcasts yeah. like they just clip what they say yeah. and repost there's not even any reaction to it it's just they're clipping somebody else's content that's it, making and money and making money off of it facebook content is the worst facebook content is the fucking devil <laughs> it is it's it's long form it's it's edging content that's what it is they just like they, you see something like, oh, like this guy, he's fill, he fills up an air mattress until it pops, but he's like filling it up and he has scissors in his hand. He acts like he's going to pop it. It's just, you're just edging. Oh. Like at that point where it's like, just pop the fucking thing. But then you're stuck <laughs> there for 15 minutes. Like, why am I here? <laughs> That's right. Thing. Just like those videos with, there's like interviews happening on the top and then on the bottom, it's like some race car yeah. going yeah. through something. It's, it's kids. It's kids, man. That is wild. Their retardation has infected the, the it's because people, I don't know, man. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I, if you, who, uh, Ethan from H3 said, if you ever have to question anything on the internet, just realize that it's kids. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. It makes total sense. <laughs> like, NPC streams, kids. What are those? Dude. <laughs> How much time do you spend on the internet, man? A lot. But and you don't know about NPC streams? No. NPC streams is the stupidest shit ever. Is it really? Yeah. Um fuck, I forgot her name. God damn it. Um she she does she, they just sit there and they you know what an NPC is? Mm -mm. It's a non-playable character. Oh, non -playable. I, so, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so when you're walking in GTA and someone's like, "Hey man, like yeah. what it do?" and then you punch him and he's like, "Oh man." Like that's that's an NPC. He's a non-playable character. He's just there to fucking take up space. There's people that do NPC streams on TikTok, and and when you send them emojis, they just react to the emojis. Like, yeah, the ones that what? are like, oh, a corn. That's her. Her right there. Her right there. This one right here. Yeah, she's the fucking worst, but she's franking and dough. But they're making a shit ton of money. Oh man, I can't. But at what cost? Right there. Just drag the piece. Drag the piece. This one. Yeah. Dude, I'm fucked. I, I'm my brain has been poisoned by the internet. I'm a victim. I should be entitled to compensation here in the next 10 years. <laughs> uh, continue as guest. That's probably going to happen, dude. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you, Have you, you look. did you use TikTok 
you know, six hours or more a day, you must be entitled to incompensation. I just seen no joke. They're saying if you played Sonic the Hedgehog, you <laughs> could be entitled to compensation. No fucking joke, dude. I'm not fucking with you. Like from Sega Genesis? Yeah. They said if you played oh, any yes. of these versions of Sonic. And I was like, what kind it's of... like Trisha PTSD Paytas to get involved. Shit. Oh, Trisha Paytas is the worst. God damn it, dude. I hate, I hate my... I hate that I know so much about the internet. It's like Limp Bizkit. I hate that they I like They just kind of like... like sit there and then they act like they're like almost like robotic type what? of thing yeah is this new no it's probably about a year old but people I've are like never racking in money dude it's stacks i think because i maybe my algorithm's different i don't i don't, I don't see think you that use TikTok yeah i don't i don't go on tiktok yeah i'm the one that uses it i don't yeah. use tiktok i don't no. know no yeah this is I'm falling prey right now to a lot of old WWF clips. I think. <laughs> what do you mean falling prey, dude? That's where I, that's where I'm at. What's up, dude? I'll did, see you there, man. Did you watch uh, WrestleMania? Did I watch WrestleMania? Yeah. I will tell you that I have a job with a lot of downtime. So yeah, I watched WrestleMania. Yeah, got, got paid for it. So what's the deal with Cody Rhodes? Is he yeah, like the, the new? He finished it, the story. Yeah, Spoilers I, alert! If you guys, if you guys didn't watch, if you guys didn't watch WrestleMania, where the fuck have you been? Yeah, but um, all right. Cody Rhodes was underappreciated, underused, treated like mm. shit in the WWE. He left and decided to take do his own thing. So when he left, he made a list of everything he wanted to do. Wanted to go to Japan. Wanted to hit the Indies. Wanted to wrestle certain people. Wanted to achieve certain things. He knocked everything out of the way. Built a whole new company and then split. Went back to the WWE so he can finally win. The, the universal title at WrestleMania. And there was a lot of shit that came into play. The Rock showed up. He tore his peck earlier, and he finally got a chance to finish his story. And he did. It's, dude, I'm telling you. Long-term storytelling, cinematic brilliance. So that was the big buzz around it. <laughs> that, was, him, that was everything around it. Him yeah. finishing it. I seen that The Undertaker came back, mm -hmm. choke slammed uh, The Rock. Yeah, but like, so... What it came down to was Rock showed up and he's like, fuck your story. What about Roman's story? And everyone's <laughs> like, yeah, what about it? Like, uh, why are we talking about Cody? Yeah. But um, it built up all this thing, all this uh, this anticipation showed up. And then The Rock and The Bloodline tried everything they do to make sure he didn't finish. But then legends like John Cena, like fucking The Undertaker and uh, Seth Rollins coming back as the architect. That oh, They all came back to get in, get in the way of that. And they... They took on all their help versus his help, and then he ended up winning, which is cool. It was, it's really fucking cool. I cried. <laughs> Not going to lie. Wrestling is sick, dude. Wrestling is dope. The In the new era right now? It's getting better because Vince McMahon's a piece of shit. And, uh, dude. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. A lot of shit is coming. And it was funny because I read, I read someone said, like, all these allegations against Vince McMahon. We're not, all, we're not at all surprised as fans. Oh, <laughs> we're my like, God. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Yeah, he was doing that shit on camera for years. Even with his daughter. Which yeah. It's crazy. Oh my god. Like he was he was hinting at shit with his daughter. It was he's just a fucking weirdo overall. Can you see where can you look up Brock Lesnar allegations because I I feel like uh, like I haven't looked into it in the past couple of weeks, but uh like the last time I was reading up on it, it was it was saying that Brock Lesnar was going to be like on like he, he had allegations against him too and like the WWE was going to so what happened was <clears throat> I don't know what they got, what trafficking mm -hmm. that's the word I don't know how far of a distance you have to do to traffic people I guess it could be in the same office mm -hmm. but he was saying he was basically giving out these girls to people that were close to him John Laurinaitis, I forgot who else was there, but he's like, yeah, me and you on Tuesday, you go to John's on Wednesday, then go fuck Brock on the weekend. Jeez. And that was like a circuit that he was running. And like, they said a big superstar in the beginning. It just so happened to be Brock Lesnar. The status of the 10-time world champion in WWE was cloudy after Lesnar was associated with the bombshell sexual assault and S trafficking Federal lawsuit filed against McMahon for former WWE employee Janelle Grant in January. Two days ago. Oh, man. Dude. And he was... He's like 
one of my all time favorite wrestlers. Dude. Brock Lesnar. Yeah, like him in the the ruthless aggression era. Oh yeah, solid. I never seen him in the modern or um or I never followed any of the stories in the modern era or yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, he has during no COVID. Stories. He just shows up and smashes people. That's basically it's a Brock smash, basically. The the Goldberg uh, yeah. esque yeah <laughs> thing what Goldberg Goldberg was doing in the late nineties. Yeah. 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 So you said you're stuck in Attitude Era right now. What do you What are you checking out? Uh, like a few months ago, I went down this like weird rabbit hole where like I built this calendar mm-hmm. of like uh, I started in '99. Uh, during the first, so I was watching. Uh, so I I took the calendar. I went back into 1999, kind of like a time capsule, and I was watching wrestling as it was coming out like okay, in the year dude, 1999 that's sick. that's sick so i was watching thursday uh, on um on some days i would watch thursday night smackdown mm-hmm. and then see when the next raw was yeah. and then just back and forth just like that thursday monday following the story like thursday that. monday and then uh watching the um dude peacock was crazy dude with with all the stuff that they have available right now peacock is insane man people sleep on peacock but they got yeah. some dope shit yeah documentaries are pretty suck on there too yeah especially if you're a wwe fan yeah uh, who would have thought dude like being an eight nine year old kid Mm -hmm. knowing that you can watch these episodes again in your late 30s like who there no i didn't think about that sometimes i got old commercials on there and that shit blows my mind really whoa i remember fucking this gushers commercial (laughs) <laughs> i remember that shit amber was watching what what were you watching you were watching something right the nanny the nanny and it had old commercials mm-hmm. Sick. like Sick. old like toy commercials too and i was like what the heck oh, hell yeah oh no i remember what i was watching that had the toy commercials i was watching um from nickelodeon it was mm-hmm. called cousin skeeter did you ever watch that that sounds familiar as hell <laughs> he was a puppet okay so he was a puppet and then everybody else was like real life. Okay. Um, but somebody put it on TikTok and said, do you guys remember this show? And then I was like, oh my God, I do. And then I went on YouTube and there was like full length episodes. Oh, and then shit. the full length episodes had um, the commercials from that yes, time. And I was yes. like, what the yeah. heck? I wanted that toy. You get hit with that nostalgia bomb. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Did you watch um, the Quiet on Set thing about Dan Schneider? Did I watch it? <laughs> I jerked off to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> I think it gets me harder than allegations. Around. Jeez. Yeah. Um, did you? I did. All dude, weren't they going to drop like a an, an like a bonus episode or something? I, are they I, really? I think they are. I think they are. What the hell? And I doubt they're going to get Amanda Bynes, but that's what we want yeah that's but what she's not even in the mental cap- capacity no, to even not. do anything what happened to she her she can't even do her eyebrows she can't do an interview she has like a dollar sign like tattooed on her face it's isn't she it's a heart oh it's a heart yeah yeah i want my amanda Bynes I, to have I think i think something did happen to her in order for her to get pushed that far like i get like a lot of them go into drugs and alcohol yeah. to cope but yeah. i think hers was like pretty intense what drugs and what alcohol that's what i'm saying that's, i know that moonshine fucks you up like that and did you know that drake bell moved to mexico and he like rebranded himself like he has like a whole new name in mexico he's a huge star in mexico mm-hmm. huge like arenas selling out arenas what yeah drake bell yeah. like a, as a musician yeah 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 really motherfucker in mexico yeah right? yeah oh mexico. is that why they said that he was like he did the interview from mexico city Mm, that makes it. sense well, that makes a lot of sense apparently because there was allegations of him talking to like underage kids too um, yeah that was during covid but it proved yeah. that he it proved that it was like oh it, it wasn't yeah it correct. wasn't legit oh, okay. whoa like they because they were saying that story that that's why that's why he moved to mexico to kind of like oh. and all that. but i mean, I mean good thing it was not true yeah he's no oh. diddy but yeah Wow. What's and, going on with Diddy? <laughs> Who knows what's going what on? What is Diddy? going on in the world, dude? <laughs> I know, dude the First Nickelodeon. Yeah. Now Diddy. You know what people are like? What's going to happen when Disney comes? Oh my God. Comes, but, but you know for a fact 
No one's going after Disney. No. No, no one's, one's going to fucking go touch Disney, dude. No. 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 That's they, some... Disney does everything so... Disney has so much money that it's like... They don't care at what cost anything is. And I tell you this, like, even just, like, on the surface, like, the company that my dad works for, they have contracts with Disney, like, the parks. Like, they do... um uh like construction for the parks Sick. and he was telling us the other day um because i was asking him they're gonna remove some stuff and i'm like do you know what they're building there and he's like yeah and he was telling us what they were gonna build but anyways he was saying that um that the speakers because they're they're speakers on light poles that one of the speakers fell and and they're not saying if it hit uh like a like a person oh shit. right Maybe a um yeah so they're not saying that um, but then literally it happened. And then hours later, my dad gets a call and they're like, Hey, your crew has to work overnight. Um, we need to remove them all. So it happened. The and then like yeah. six hours later, the crew's like at Disney and they literally, my dad's like, yeah, we're removing every single like sound box what the from fuck? there so that no one can be like, Oh, look at that's the sound box that it had oh, or do a shit. video or a picture or anything. So they they don't care what they have to pay to do these things. No, it's they don't. Crazy. No, dude. And they have the money, they have the resources. They, they got hush money for days. Dude, I was at Disneyland standing in line. One of the horses walking down Main Street USA took a shit in the middle of the street. And I timed it on my watch. I'm like, I I, I told <laughs> I told my baby's mom, I said, Hey, um, that horse just took a shit. Like two people stepped in it already. How long do you think it's going to take for them to do it? And then the, she's like, watch, it will happen right away. Timed it, minute and 23 seconds. It was gone. I, I was like, I was timing it. I looked and then I looked back and then I looked away and then I looked back and it was gone. Yeah. I'm like, dude, these people are, they're in trap doors and shit, just hiding, ready to come out. Imagine the interview process to be a horse shit picker up. <laughs> yeah. You know? I don't think it's even that. Dude. I think they have them so under their thumb, they're just like, hey, go. Like the people selling fucking... Corn dogs? Yeah. <laughs> turkey leg, turkey leg guys. The, yeah, your your job is turkey leg slash uh, right. pick up horse shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but people, people get jobs at Disney for the perks. Like I know... Oh, like, yeah. I know yeah. someone personally that has a full-time job, <laughs> like a full-time job, and then they got a Disney job for literally one day a week so that they can get their family into Disney whenever they want. They'll take it. And uh, this person trades the shift off every time. So she gives a shift <laughs> she away. She doesn't even fucking work. So she doesn't work. <laughs> she does not work. No way. She's on payroll, though. She's on payroll. Oh, yeah. shit, my boy Victor Gill in the chat. What's up, doggy? How you doing, man? That's my boy. Hell yeah, That's dude. Boy, What's right? up, Victor? Yeah. Thanks for joining the chat. Motherfucker drives up to, I don't know if you, whatever, he's basically an ice road trucker really yeah ice road trucker what ice road yeah trucker goes up to the yukon and shit just for shits and gigs oh my goodness ranks Whoa. in money though but my, my boy's doing it my boy's doing it the motherfucker's legit and it's like they're they're huge trucks well they, he's just in the up in the snow up in the yeah they're like yeah. semi trucks and they hell no the dude semis up to the snow that's Special like kind of person Special yeah kind of person to do that type of shit that's like up there with like uh, deep water fishing and being an astronaut dude or the the person that gets paid i think it's like once a year is that job where they have to change the light bulb have you seen that oh on the where are they on the it's fucking like mega towers or yeah it's like it some yeah. tower that's like pff, yeah. i don't know like a hundred feet high probably even more and it only gets changed once a year because that's like the like pull it up i want to see how big dude. it is and uh, they get much? paid like stupid how much? amount of how much money. how much you think how much you think uh, I want to say a hundred thousand. A hundred thousand? Yeah. Damn, I was thinking like 60, 70 G's. Is that too much? No, I think you're around that. About a hundred thousand. Oh, you're um, hot or cold? Hot or cold? His versus mine. Uh, he said seventy thousand. Right? Seventy. Seventy. Seventy-five. Uh, what do I put? Person that changes. Okay, so you said a hundred thousand. I'm just guessing, dude. I don't even know what this person does. I'm gonna play the prices <laughs> right rules, and I'm gonna say one dollar. <laughs> Kevin Schmidt. That's him. So one thousand five hundred feet. Yep. Whoa. Schmidt. Kevin. Sch dude. That's no. him, dude. No. He's a wild dude. I wonder what he Type does on Kevin Schmidt Network. I wonder what he does. Oh, twenty thousand. Oh, one day every one six, day every six months and earns twenty thousand at a time, ah. dude. A year, forty k. 
Let's go. How long does it take? For just two days. For just two days out of the year, bro. Wow. I think it. I think it said like it takes them like four hours up and then like oh my four God. hours down. I mean, at hour two, you got to be like, all right, this is whatever. Like, I bet you he shits himself for the first hour of that. Yeah. Yeah, and then somebody was like, imagine he forgets the light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> Eight hour job, dude, full day. That would be yeah. me. I, I would. I would do something. You would get to like the that. top and be like, yeah. Because you're so like hypersensitive and you're you're thinking about like the the actual thing you have to do and you forget. Is that him with Shut is that his lunch? Oh. His lunch? No, it's the, <laughs> the bulb. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> what did you fucking take a portable blender up there? Yeah. Juice That's, it, no, it looked like a happy meal. Uh, <laughs> I wonder it what did. happens if he like has these restrooms. Let's it go. Whoa. It's gonna disintegrate by the Whoa. time it's around. Look at that. This video of a man climbing 1,500 feet. Dude, fuck that. World's tall. So this is the world's tallest tower. Yeah, what does it? Look at that light bulb, dude. It looks like a football. And Kevin Schmidt changes the light bulb every six months. Every six months. Wow. More like Kevin's the Schmidt. You know what I'm talking about? Hey. <laughs> look at him, dude. He's just... He's a handsome guy. Maybe Schmidt myself if I was. Oh he, no. He's the Schmidt. But yeah, yeah imagine forty grand. <laughs> forty grand, dude. That's not bad. Dude, you could just do two days out of the week and just fuck for the rest of your life. That's not bad. Like two dude. days out of the year. Come on. Is he married? I, what is the life, the the life uh, insurance policy on oh, this guy? Oh man. Yeah. No one probably wants to insure this fool. Who has man. who has his job? Like if he calls off, <laughs> how do you apply for that? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! I Imagine like. I know what that's like. <laughs> God damn, man! How do you apply? How do you apply for that? Yeah, you're, like, uh, you're gonna change a light bulb twice a year. Oh shit! I'm down. <laughs> and then you show up. Yeah, it's, it's up there. Yeah. Ah like, oh, fuck. Like how do you how do you train for this? How do you? Like you you watch uh, these old 1990s uh, like safety videos. <laughs> right. The safety videos must be amazing. I love them. I yeah. love safety videos like that. There's there's an Instagram page I follow called um, OSHA is this safe? It's my <laughs> favorite fucking thing. Dude. It's like people in the workplace doing the sketchiest shit. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so crazy. I used to work at a uh, at a warehouse, mm -hmm. a Walmart warehouse. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, and no, it was. Terrible. One of the formative years of my life, dude. Yeah. It was my first my first job. I worked at the Glendora location for about like four, three and a half, four years. Okay. And I worked in, in the back in the warehouse. And I remember a pallet. Like this guy was, he had uh, like the stand-up forklift. And he was picking up the, the pallet of juice. It was juice. He they didn't juice, quite. They palleted juice back then. Yeah, it was okay. huge, like just like bottles of like uh, orange spray, water bottles, just like very heavy. I'm oh, not too juice. Juice, yeah. Oh, I thought you said. Oh no, I thought you said juice. Oh no, this wasn't uh, Germany in the 1940s. This was... <laughs> <laughs> what kind of warehouse was this? In Auschwitz, in Auschwitz. <laughs> Auschwitz warehouse, lifting up <laughs> juice. Uh, no, it was. Uh, ocean spray it was like a huge pellet of ocean spray right and he was picking it up and he qu couldn't quite get he didn't quite get it on the rafters oh shit and he he was like nudging it in because it was too tall terrible for the, idea yeah it's terrible idea. it was too tall and at a certain point like the the machine started giving out because of the weight oh shit yeah dude it was so fucking scary yeah and then like he hit like the the alarm on it and it's supposed to stop it didn't stop and it like started like jerking all like bad and that whole pallet just came crashing down it was Anybody fucking hurt no nobody got oh, hurt shit. thank god dude it was so scary oh, i ran away yeah yeah, I, <laughs> I did. I was supposed to be spotting him too, and I was just like, oh I was like, dude, God. I'm, I'm out of here. Like, yeah. I'm leaving. It's terrible. I could have died, dude. I ain't dying for juice, dude. Ocean spray. Yeah, <laughs> ocean yeah. spray. <laughs> Hell no, sprayed. dude. <laughs> it was wild. It was the scariest, one of the scariest moments of my life, dude. 
That's crazy. That, now, that... now I know what kind of person you are. Yeah. The other day we were driving and then w- there was like a an accident. And then, no, there was a girl <laughs> that almost got ran over. A we guy almost her. got ran over? A girl. Oh, a girl. She crossed and it wasn't time for her to cross. And she like crossed and then the car was like zooming by. And then I was like, oh my God. And I was all freaking out. And then he's like, man, well, what do you do if like that happened? Like if you saw her get hit? And I was like, well, I would pull over and go make sure that she's okay and he's like you would and he's like what if she's like bleeding now and i'm like well then i'm gonna apply pressure i'm gonna take off my sweater and i'm gonna do like a tourniquet and he's like you would and i'm like yes what are you and he's like no he's like i don't want to get blood all over myself oh my god oh my god i i can't with the sight of blood then you can't Mm -hmm. you're one of those no i'm I'm just uh it i don't know what about it it's just it's nasty i don't know do you faint no i wouldn't faint i mean i've never seen somebody well i have because i've been in a morgue one time and i seen like an actual like um autopsy going on that was weird but as far as the uh like blood thing i've only seen my my blood really nobody else's yeah yeah my lip i have i've had um 32 stitches Right here on my lip. What happened? 16 inside and 16 outside. I got bit by a dog. Fuck. Yeah. 16 in? How much out? 16. 16 and 16. Oh, 16. And 16. They're oh. tiny. Yeah, my lip oh, was yeah. like huge. Like, it was outside. like this big. Yeah. I was 12 years old. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. If the dog would have really like got onto my lip, mm-hmm. he would have tore a piece of my, my face off. <sighs> That's crazy, man. Yeah. That's, That's why I'm just like, people are like, oh, why don't you like dogs? Mm-hmm. This is why. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> no, I cut my leg in half. Ah! <laughs> um, I cut my what, leg in half. Yeah. That's how I feel you on the inside outside yeah. stitches because I've had 30. How was it? I don't mean to compare stories. I don't mean to no, go for it. Um, all right. So the only way I can describe it is if I have this, like my mm-hmm. phone. All right. So we had the stage in my backyard. It was my brother's birthday. Um, the cops showed up. We were partying. We were underage. My brother just turned 18. They beat the shit out of him, took him to jail. Oh. And um, we had a stage set up because we had bands performing. Now these stages, it was basically like a like a fold-up table or like a like a table in yeah. WWE. Hell yeah. <laughs> they built them like that. They're just pieces of plywood with um, just stands on them. But they weighed like 50 pounds each. So we had two of them. Me and my brother, after he got out of jail, we were breaking the stage down, and he had two of them on a dolly, and he's carrying them like this, and he's he's going this way, and I'm like spotting him, like you, I actually did what you did, and I ran away, <laughs> <laughs> but, but he was carrying them, and then he hit a box, so where am I? Where's my camera? All right, so he was carrying them, and then he hit a box, and he stood them up like that, and then me not thinking. Started walking away this way, and the it fell like that and caught the back of my leg. Ah, um, eight inches across, um, two inches open, and three inches deep. Oh my god! So I look down at my leg and I see the fatty tissue. Oh, and my bone. Oh, yeah. And by the time I ran from the backyard to the front porch, like as soon as I the first step I took on the front porch. I just saw all the blood just come up and ah. ca- cascade over oh. my shoe because it was like pulled up in my shoe. <laughs> oh, shoot. And then uh, my sister, which is a lot like what Amber would do, yeah. and she would put a tourniquet on it, and my mom was freaking out. Oh, my God. I go to the ER, and they're like, all right, um, all right, he has a laceration on his leg, okay? Just go to the waiting room. And then... Um, I'm in the waiting room with these two old bitches. And then she's like, she's like, what, what'd you do? I was like, oh, I cut my leg. And she's like, oh, I remember like my Ernest cut his leg and he got gangrene and they had to amputate his leg. And I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here like, oh, what was I, 15? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, shut the fuck up. Like, stop <laughs> talking to me. So then uh, then my my sister goes up to the to the people at the receptionist area. It's like, hey, this is bad. This is really bad right now. Yeah. So they went and they they lifted up because my sister used a sheet, lifted up the sheet and saw how fucking just gnarled my leg was. They're like, we got to get you back right now. And I'm laying f- laying on my stomach on the waiting on on the emergency room table. And when they're assessing it, they're just shooting it up with with numbing 
with the oh, what, yeah. what is it fucking whatever lidocaine or lidocaine something? i thought lidocaine was a topical mouth, huh? topical ointment yeah maybe you're right yeah anesthesia novocaine i don't know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> one of those it wasn't co so that's why i'm upset <laughs> but um they're just shooting it up with fucking whatever and then by the time i turned around and looked at what they were doing i just see them get the fucking sheet of of skin and just bring it up and fold it over uh, and then start stitching it up and then stapling it down oh my ah. god but um blood it's cool man it's, it's just what happened <laughs> i like i like when you went to the emergency they're like oh just a laceration yeah, yeah. that's it not serious at all no that was stupid no <laughs> that was so dumb. yeah i i besides the that's fucking wild how many stitches did you get uh 32 okay inside and out and um i think 15 staples well dude you yours seems like a huge uh a huge like uh cut it's bad yeah yeah i don't why did i say 32 maybe it, am i wrong no, because if they know. were little, that's fine. That's They're really little. Like oh. Right here. <laughs> okay, ah. I see. It. <laughs> yeah. Ah, no, man. Dude, it's numb. I can't. I can't feel it. You can't feel anything around that area. No. Go get a stick. Go get a stick. I feel like the fatty tissue. Like say say this is how it this yeah. is how it fit, and then it ripped. It feels like it was put together like this. So it's like I can feel something's not right in my leg. Oh man. It's like mis misplaced or whatever whoa it's weird ah. i have a plastic kneecap too so a plastic kneecap <laughs> yeah how do you get a plastic one dude i am i'm fucking i've been road hard and put up dry dude <laughs> <sighs> yeah but no um you're here you i'm here i'm here yeah, yeah. you don't have gangrene i don't have gangrene and i didn't lose my leg so we're good. <laughs> and i got a plastic knee yeah yeah that That's was from skateboarding i fucking i was 11 years old and i landed wrong and the tendon that's that's attached to your kneecap your kneecap yeah. is embedded in a tendon it's severed at the bottom and it popped up to my thigh so for a year i was walking around with no kneecap it was just like a the <laughs> cave ah. and then they finally just put it down put a plastic one on top of it and put two screws in this is what kids need nowadays like i feel like there's there's not enough of these stories for well they're not taking risks anymore for kids anymore yeah yeah this is what they need they need plastic knees and 62 <laughs> stitches on their face yeah, but if you were to age my body, I'd be somewhere around 82. Yeah, I think my lungs would be like around like 82. Your lungs? I think so. Maybe. You free basin or what? Maybe 50 years old. No, <laughs> yes. I used to smoke cigarettes. Oh, cigarettes? Yeah. Like back in the <sighs> I day. I had to stop smoking cigarettes because I was I uh, coughed up blood one time. Ah, that's the worst, dude. Have when you, done you that? When you start hocking up like black, like the actual tar. Yeah. Not blood, but the actual black stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just have you have you heard that there is a connection now with vapes and erectile dysfunction? Whoa, really? And I can tell you in my experience, <laughs> I think it's true. <laughs> Either that or she was just fucking ugly. <laughs> the vapes were popping off like 20 years ago, dude. I feel like there's no Oh, the vapes, they're just accessible now. Yeah. It's China juice. Well, it's because they say that vapes are like, at least when you smoke a cigarette, you know how many cigarettes you're smoking. So you can be like, okay, I smoked one cigarette, mm -hmm. smoked two cigarettes. Right. And they're saying with vapes, there's not really, you're not, you don't really know the amount that you're smoking. So you can inhale right. like a really, really big, like, I don't know, what do you call them? Rips? I don't know. <laughs> Rips? <laughs> yeah. I Jokes. guess, right? And yeah. it could be like the equivalent of like half of a, a, a drag. Like, so they're just saying that, that that's why like it's even worse to vape because you really don't know. The amount that you're yeah. like ingesting and you can vape anywhere too you can vape in the restroom you can vape in the kitchen i vape at the hospital on a podcast i think someone can was we? vaping at the if ice you want, house yeah. oh. there was what someone was vaping at the ice house dude <laughs> they were the girl in front of me are you serious yeah because i was like is there food steaming <laughs> or, is, or is that smoke and then i seen that she didn't have anything like hot like hot food mm. and i was like oh I was she actually was holding off. I was holding off for a long time. This is probably the longest I've gone without taking a drag. No, it's fine. Are those flumes? It's, yeah, it is. Is that a flume? Yeah, yeah. Those are really good. Um, It's it's fucking stupid. This right here. <laughs> this is this, this is Willy Wonka, basically. Today. 
all the flavors that are coming out, all the different oh, types yeah. of juice. You're getting addicted to it, basically. Yeah. It, uh, it's it's crazy. Yeah, dude. I vape everywhere. Yeah. Dude, I'll be <laughs> I'll be vaping and then see someone at work vaping in, in the showroom and I yell at them, Hey, stop. <laughs> stop doing that. But I'd be on my shit. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> so let's take it to your um your Oh, roast speaking about pro wrestling. Yeah. Um the roast tournament. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, so talking about my job at the improv, I'm a yeah. sound guy there. Um I actually went to radio broadcasting school. So I was like already going towards somewhere getting a sound job but um or getting a job in the field but that's kind of presented itself my ex used to work there and and referenced me because you know it was something i was wanting to do and then it's just taken off from there man i've uh, gotten opportunities i've taken every opportunity i can i've made it the best and i've built some cool shit so like we were talking about pro wrestling and i just wanted to bring up the roast tournament because it is basically my pro wrestling uh promotion hell yeah dude (laughs) no it is fucking awesome dude i was able to catch it uh like a few weeks ago at the ontario yeah you saw me lose yeah uh not my best not my best performance but you know um like vince mcmahon in the 90s dude he just gets himself involved in his own shit it's like it's 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 a playground dude it is so fucking fun what we're doing over there yeah and um yeah, just whatever. Oh, well, we have an undefeated champ that just vacated the belt. So. That that was wild. I was like, yeah. "What is he doing?" Okay, so sees Reynoso just he just retained his title for the for the ninth time, right? He's nine and zero. I think he's his record is seven and zero as a as a champ. Wow, dude! And at the end of it, he just I, I'm vacating the title. Yeah, man, it's gonna create it's gonna create a lot of people wanting to go for it because I'm not gonna lie, man. There's a lot yeah. of people that have declined facing C's because they don't think they can take him. So really? he's a motherfucker. Respect to C's, man. Respect to C's right now. So he's yeah. a motherfucker. What What do you think? Because I was, I, I didn't go that day, but I've been like thinking about it. Boo. Since I know. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm <laughs> no, just joking. I'm like, I know. Um, But what are like, because, okay, so I guess explain to maybe someone that doesn't, I know it sounds self-explanatory, but yeah. like, can you kind of like sum it up to maybe someone that doesn't know? So basically, what, what it is? basically, the roast is you're just talking shit, you're just ripping jokes. But it's a great exercise for comics to not only like think off the top, but like just go into. It's a totally different exercise of writing, and you can still pull material from that. You can say a joke, and it'd be so good that you can make it into a bit. So uh, that's that's the the whole thing is encouragement and. Um, it started off as an open mic roast tournament, but then as it started growing and people started getting uh, interest, then we started booking it like a show. Mm. So at the first one, anyone can sign up, and we had 16 people, and then it went all the way down to C's. So he's been holding the title since. He's been holding it for over a year. Oh, Jesus. Wow. Yeah, but um, basically it's go round by round. You get a minute, I get a minute, you get a minute, I get a minute, you get a last joke, I get a last joke. And then we have a panel of four judges, and they decide on who, who, who wins. Hell yeah, dude. But if we go to an audience decision, what I like to do then is leave it up to the audience. So, you know, cheer for who you want to win, right? Mm. But how we do it over there, you got to boo for who you want to lose. <laughs> oh, yeah. shit. So it'll be like, sees, boo. And uh-huh. like, like someone else, <sighs> boo. Like you start yelling and everyone gets involved and it becomes a fucking big thing. It was amazing, dude. I th- honestly, when I went, a couple of weeks ago to the Rose Tournament at the Ontario Improv, I thought I was going to witness Rick and Sandy lose their belts. Yeah. I th- I thought I was going to witness that right. that night. Right. And Sandy's, he's my, he's, he's, he's my boy, dude. Yeah. Like Rick, he's they're fucking, great, they're, they're both, so good. they're so cool. They're cool people. They're great comics. And I thought I was going to witness them lose. And I was like, oh my God, I've, I, I feel bad. I, I don't, I didn't want to see this. It was a tough match. It was it was tough. Wild. Yeah. Does anybody get like upset like like when roasting or is it just a lot of like everybody uh, kind of understands? Um yeah, there's someone who's banned from our club that got upset, but <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, they're not even worth talking about, so I'm not gonna talk about it. <laughs> yeah. uh, wow. Ass hurt, ass hurt and walked out like a bitch. Whoa. Yeah. I'll stand on business with that one. Fuck him. But <laughs> Um, what I brought today was the titles. I wanted you guys to see them. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Ah! Here's, uh, here's Whoa. Tag team title. 
Oh shit! That's yeah. cool. Uh, on the on the the side plates, it shows it. It says improv on it because we we have the improv blessing with that. Those are so cool. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks. Uh, we have the tag title, and then right now the vacated world heavyweight title, Whoa. which sees, there we go. Sees vacated. He will be back. He said he will be back if someone. If if he has a viable viable opponent, here we go. Roast tournament, world That's heavyweight cool. title. Dude, fucking cool, dude. How cool is it, man? And like being that that you went into the wrestling rabbit hole not too long ago, it's like yeah. kind of like, damn, dude. Hell yeah! Look at this, dude. This yeah. is like, this is dope, bro. Very proud of what, oh we're, my what God. we've been able to do. Very proud. Oh, this is yeah. so fucking cool. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> You're all crying. You're like, I've never held a belt before. <laughs> Well, I I was taking uh, so uh, I was taking pictures with all the champs. Yeah, and Steve's was like, "Oh, hold it, hold it, like mm. put it on," and I'm like, "No, no, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't want to do it." Yeah, Steve's actually um so, uh we we hold the, the, they're title holders, but we keep the belts, you know, like this is yeah. this is this is a treasure right here. Wow, Steve's actually bought his own to put up in his house. <laughs> Did he really? Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah, dude! Because it's fucking dope, dude. Like it's so cool. And then we have the Infinite Chaos Championship, which we don't. I don't have it right now. Mm -hmm. But you witnessed the the battle. It was oh four. So it was the yeah it that was, belt with the yeah, infinity the, sign yeah, on it. Yeah. Okay, that's the Infinite Chaos belt. And with that division, we do anything. Like uh, like we keeping it to four like a uh, four man elimination. So we go. Everyone gets a minute. And then the judges eliminate someone. Everyone gets a minute. The judges eliminate someone, and then it's down to two. And then whoever takes that wins the belt. Maddie Mays is our current Infinite Chaos champion, and she's she's killing it right now. Maddie Mays is on fire. Wow. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm. I'm. <laughs> he's, he's, <laughs> I'm looking at this. He's taking scene. it in. <laughs> I know. I am. I. I wasn't able to uh, the last time. Yeah. But with the brick wall influence from the improv, the improv cool, side dude. plates, dude. It's we love it man. it's a nice design bro thank you thank you shout out to bryce and uh i forgot her name so there's a, somebody asked me if they if there's like a company out there that makes wrestling gear is this the this company is um undisputed belts uh -huh. um we have another company that made our infinite chaos champion that one's hands down one of the most beautiful belts i've ever seen <laughs> Right there, there you go. There you go. Right there, dude. That's fucking dope, dude. This is <laughs> fucking awesome, man. Yeah, I'm like a kid at a candy store right awesome, now, dude. dude. Yeah, no, this is this is what we be doing out here, bro. That's fucking dope. So, how did this whole thing start? So, all right. So i I show up to my my job, like start working there. Uh, my boss is like, we're bullshitting all day, and then um. It was right out of COVID. They didn't have the open mic anymore. So the open mic was an hour pre-COVID. And then they, I'm, I'm just saying what people have told me is brought to like 12, 20 people to the open mic. But COVID happened and then they brought it back after COVID. And now they gave me an hour and a half. So what I was doing, they, 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 they said, Adrian, do you, would you like to do the host the open mic? And I was like, yeah, because I told them that I had previous experience trying to do it, but I wasn't ready yet. So I was like, would you like to give it a shot? I'm like, yeah, dude, no problem. So I started driving out to Pasadena, OC, LA. Um, I haven't been to San Diego yet, but just in this general area, area going through different um, counties. And then they extended it 30 minutes. Um, our highest ticket count was, I think, 165 for an open mic. And that is crazy. Like now, yeah. we, now we got sign up so much that we can't even get to all of them. So wow. that blew up. And then with that, I shoehorned this roast battle idea that I've been having for a while. And yeah, I, they got behind it and it was now we had, a, it was extended to two hours. So we had an hour of open mic, an hour for the roast. And then recently about six months ago, they, they cut it in half. They said, all right, you can have your roast show. And then the open mic, roast show, open mic, and just alternating every month. Wow, and, dude. And I want to get it to the point where we have roast first or open mic first week of the month, roast last week of the month. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nice. On a, on a monthly basis? Yeah. Nice. Because Tuesdays are off nights. We're never open Tuesdays. Right. But since the open mic really took off and then the roast followed it, they're like, they're going to do more off nights now coming up. Mm. So if there's a position there, I'd be fucking more than happy to take it. Yeah. Is there any chance of uh, doing a weekly open mic? Um, do you see in the near future? I, I'm, I'm telling them all the time. We're actually going to, there's new locations opening up. So 
Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, dude, they're gonna open one up in Mexico City. What? Yeah. Ooh, that's cool. Right? An improv in Mexico City. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. Really? And other places too, but I don't know how much I'm, I'm at liberty to tell. No, about of course, that. of course. You could yeah. tell me off, uh, yeah, off camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no, definitely. Okay. <laughs> Damn, that's wild, dude. It's a lot of fun, man. It's Ontario. Where? Where's the? Because there's not much. There's not many comedy clubs in the Inland Empire, dude. You have Covina Laugh Factory. Covina. That's, that's pretty right. new. Um, fairly new, actually. Fairly right? new. Yeah. They Within like two years or something yeah, like that. Yeah. They don't see nearly as much. It's a beautiful venue. I love I've it. seen pictures of it. I haven't been there, but it looks nice. Luckily enough, I was able to perform there with Kevin Millard. Shout out Kevin Millard. Nice. Fucking, that's my boy. Yeah. And um, bombed. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't do good at all. <laughs> but, you know, I'm coming from Ontario, man. That's a, I don't, And you know what? Say what you want about demographics. But that shit's real. Um, totally different demographic out there that didn't really. Then Covina? Then Ontario. Covina and Ontario are completely different demographics. Mm. But, you know, as a comedian, you should be able to make the world laugh. So I've beaten myself up multiple times since then. But, yeah. How do you handle something like that, dude? Like that? You just take it. <laughs> you just take it. And then right? feel like a bitch for two weeks. <laughs> and then go out and prove yourself wrong. Two weeks? Two and more weeks than is that. too long. No, I'm telling you, man. Well, when, like me, I've, I have mental problems. <laughs> I'm actually two days off medication right now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know, it's good. You know, it's good to mess with your, uh, with your um, chemical makeup. Ow. <laughs> Women change their makeup every day. Why not have a little fun? Yeah. Change a little bit of the brain structure. In there, <laughs> I like it. I like it. Oh, it's fine. You'll be fine. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Roast tournament. Yeah. Damn, dude. It is fucking cool. I'm glad you had a good time, man. Yeah, it was it was really fun. Yeah. I liked it. Uh seeing a lot of um faces like in the crowd mm -hmm. that uh I see at open mics and stuff, yeah, dude. Yeah. Um I wish I would have came out like sooner, you know. But it yeah. was it was a good night to come out because I was able to see you. Yeah, yeah. Um sees vacating the title sandy almost losing <laughs> rick almost losing they um the judges was pretty off that night really the judges were off because i i believe that sandy and they didn't have a clean sweep they lost they lost around for sure really was, uh, shoddy and um cory they were really fucking good they're really good yeah, but they, they clean sweeped them i didn't i didn't think that but you know yeah towards the end that's when rick and sandy picked it up and yeah, watched yeah, it. yeah yeah but it, that's the full fun about it man yeah like, and and it was kind of weird for me because i was competing and i didn't i wasn't the ref like richard via was the ref and it just made me feel weird because i'm usually right there in the shit but like i have to mm. sit back and, was that you over the pa uh no that's bryce okay yeah i have a bryce is working with me helping me do this thing oh nice yeah okay he's great I thought that was you over the PA making the announcements. I was no, like, oh, that sounds cool. No, the thing with Bryce is he has a little bit of autism. So he's able to do focus on areas that I can't. Mm, yeah, okay. I have ADHD. He has autism. We work perfectly together. Nice. I need a, <laughs> I need a person with autism. Yeah, you, need to, you need to sync your disabilities as a, as a collective. It really wow. works out. OCD. What can I use for my OCD? Um, nothing. That's a terrible... That's a terrible disease. Do I have OCD? I don't have. I have something. I, I, I dude. think you have to a certain extent. OCD. A little bit. Yeah. Are you? Uh, are you like in? Are you, do you need to be in creative control of everything? No, uh, actually really? not. Okay. Do uh, I? Yeah. I do. Um, I guess it depends on what. Some aspect, liberties, but no, yeah, you do. Some liberties, right? Mm, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> I think I get to a certain point where like there's a lot going on and I'm just like, ah, all right, I, I'll let this go mentally. Okay. And if I let it go mentally, then if it goes, you know, either good or bad, yeah, it's fine. But for the most part, he, he wants to do everything cause he feels like no one can do it the way that he has it in his brain. I get that. I'm a very planned person. I, I plan everything everything is but except for our interview usually i go by a huge like a, a booking system with oh. you i didn't yeah yeah 
Yeah. Which which I would, made me a little bit on edge. Oh really? Yeah, <laughs> it did. Don't worry about it, man. Because I I I go by like we me and Amber have a lot of things going on, like with the podcast, the business, mm-hmm. other people's podcasts that we're producing now. Oh shit! Really? Yeah, the oh. shows that we do on a weekly basis, monthly. We there, we have a lot of moving parts. That's so awesome, dude. our calendar is. Or insane, right? is is just we have to have everything in it yeah. so that way I can. So plan. can I disrupt anything coming in here or what? No, oh. you're good. Okay, cool. No, no we you're usually good. record on Tuesdays either way. Yeah, so it's Off always Tuesdays. recording. These. Yeah, that's why it worked out so perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're you're fine. It was just the uh like Amber was asking like, oh, what time is the show going to be tonight? Like. Mm-hmm. Who is this guy? Mm-hmm. Like, because we have a booking system, Calendly, yeah, that uh, has all that information. Oh, okay. Like, we have a podcast, another podcast this Thursday, okay, and it has all that information in it. Oh, Just okay. yeah. gets us ready for. That's awesome, man! Like, you guys really have your shit together. I, That's awesome. We try. Man, you impress me. <laughs> <laughs> so, how long have you been uh, at the improv? Uh, two and a half years. Two and a half. Yeah. Oh, I seen your thing with um, d- uh, on deck with Danny Nixon. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. that was so cool, dude. Danny's great. Danny's a great dude. He's awesome. Yeah. That. Yeah. Can Can you pull up uh, Danny's uh, on deck thing? Uh, it's on my It's on my page. You go to my page. You go to the reels. Okay. It's It's up there. That was like the first um, like introduction. Right there on deck. Wait, go down. Uh, it's the one to the right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Play it. Welcome to On Deck with Danny Nixon. I am here at the Ontario Improv with Adrian Luna. He is the sound tech and also host of the Open Mic and Roast Tournament here in Ontario. First Tuesday of every month, they alternate between Open Mic and Roast Tournament. So like, just look at the calendar. You'll see Open Mic, Roast Tournament, Open Mic. Seriously, one of the best mics in all of Southern California. Yeah. Now you got like the dream job, dude. It, it literally is my dream job, yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Who are some of that, when you think about some of your favorite comedians that have come through, who would you who would you put on that you, list? You know what? I've had a lot, of, like my top five Mount Rushmore of like favorite comics. But since working here, the comics that I've met, that I've worked with, like one of my favorites is Ian Bag. Ian Bag is insane. I never heard about him, but sure. watching this guy do his thing, it's amazing. Every show's different. Some of the ladies are upset. I was told it tasted like peaches. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The peaches had a batter in it. Right. Corey Holcomb. Bag, I've known him from his acting. I've known him from like Wild and Out and stuff. But seeing him, he's he's my top to come and watch. Now, if you got a lot of money. You can get some of the finest women in the world. The way your woman look represents your income. <laughs> I see this recession and hit a couple of y'all upside the head. Brought a lot of people out here. Hey, there's Jay. Yeah, this is a this is the allure of the back dock. Yeah, yeah. People walk. So this is, yeah. We, we are at, we are where all the comedians come after the show. Yes. To maybe partake in some illegal substance. <laughs> you said there was a curse. There's a Ontario <laughs> improv curse. Did we just am I am I cursed? Let's right? so. There is a curse at the Ontario Improv that pretty much only all the employees know about. Headlining acts will come here and then die. So for instance, Ralphie May, one of his last performances here. John Witherspoon, his last performance here. Dick Gregory, his last performance here. Shout out to recently Bob Saget. He played here and then died like a week later. So there is some sort of like Ontario Improv headliner curse. Mm -hmm. Is it the building you think itself? This building is cursed. Yeah. Yeah. And there's always some ghost stories here. I don't know necessarily ghost stories. It's just bad. It's just bad. It's funny because every time I've been here, I've had amazing shows. Yeah. But I'm not a headliner, so hopefully I'm safe. (laughs) That's why I'm like, you know Uh, what? We're but yeah. That's that's the that's an improv curse. That's I uh, kind of know about. I didn't know that. Ontario uh, specifically. I'm scared to go on tonight. I don't know (laughs) if I want. Rethinking everything. Yeah. Uh, Dude, it's a great mic. It's, it's Thanks, one man. of my favorites for Thanks. sure. Yeah. You're doing something right, man. And I'm thankful for you to come on our first Thank show you, and, and try it out. We'll see how it works. Yeah, yeah. This may be awful, uh, <laughs> okay. but I appreciate you coming out and doing this for us and, and setting cool. up the mic for all the comedians. Yeah. If it doesn't work out, <laughs> let me know. I'll do it again. For sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Thank you. Danny's such a super cool yeah, guy, dude. dude. Great segment, dude. Danny's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, um, that... Uh, I'm gonna tell you my Bob Saget story. I'm gonna tell you my Bob Saget story and I'm gonna tell you, all right, so Michael Ian Black was just there. 
and one of his uh, openers was wearing a Bob Saget like tribute T-shirt, and uh, it was they were reminiscing about Bob Saget, and I was like, I actually have a story. Uh, Miss Pat was there the day before Bob Saget, and her merch guy left to Vegas because they had a, a show in Vegas, and didn't take their merch, so he was out there. Um, she tried to call an Uber to take her merch all the way out to Vegas. Oh. But the Uber said no. And I'm just standing there. I just got it. I used to have a, draw, a job for CarMax. I was delivering cars. So like if someone buys a car in um, in San Diego, but the car is in LAX, I would drive out to LAX, pick up that car, deliver it to San Bernardino, or to deliver it to San Diego, and then come back, and then deliver another car. So I was already used to driving like long hours of the day. So I just told her, hey, I'll take it. And then... Yeah, we settled a price on it. And then, yeah, I loaded up my car with her merch, delivered it to Vegas, turned around, came back, probably got, I think it was like two hours of sleep. And then I worked Bob Saget show. Holy shit. And, and he was, he has, his, he was playing guitar and stuff. And I found one of his picks on the stage. So as I was cleaning up and we're wrapping up, I went to the green room and I said, Hey, Bob, uh, a fan uh, has one of your guitar picks. And he was asked, he wants to ask you if you can sign it for him. And he's like, Yeah, sure. And he's signing it. And then, mid signing it he's like hey is the fan you and i was like yeah yeah so he's like here dude signed it gave me this guitar pick uh he's like can you walk me out to my car i was like yeah so i walked him out to his car and we sat there and bullshitted for like five minutes what the hell dude and he died a week later oh shoot so i tell this story to michael ian black and his openers and they're just like oh my god and then michael ian black's just staring out and he's just like can i ask you a question serious question i was like yeah he's like what the fuck does miss pat have to do with that story <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, maybe my dedication to come back and work your show, <laughs> to work his show. It was fucking hilarious. But yeah, that's my Bob Saget story. I, I got a lot of stories. Wow, dude. Just being there, working as a sound guy at the improv. A lot of shit's happened. Bob Saget, man. Legend, man. Yeah. Yep. That was sad, dude. Uncle Bob, dude. That was sad. It was just like uh, like a small like it, like accident right like him hitting his head on the wall about him too but it, it's so dumb people There's, blow it out of proportion yeah yeah if him who else there is there a conspiracy about robin williams yeah that one was weird though yeah that one was weird yeah. considering the 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 movie that he was in just like a few few months before yeah. his passing mm -hmm of like the character did you hear about this one no. the character that he was playing actually uh asphyxiated himself in the movie like his character and then like a few months later like that happened in real life yeah oh shit sorry <laughs> yeah. yeah crazy yeah besides bob saget what what other crazy stories do you have that's a that's a <laughs> awesome one dude oh thanks that's man. awesome i still have it and it's in my laptop the case. pick yeah oh shoot i need to frame that shit that is wild yeah yeah that needs to be framed dude. oh yeah 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 there's it sucks because we talk about it we're like there's a lot we can't talk about our job that's happened here <laughs> yeah yeah damn dude i don't know dude that is that's wild dude yeah it's, but on the OC, ocd type of things man producing you know you being a producer of your own content like me producing shows mm -hmm. i when i i take my job very seriously because i don't want to fuck up someone else's show because i wouldn't like anyone to fuck up my show yeah so i get that I yeah where you're coming from yeah but also too there's at a certain point there's like at a certain point as your your shows get bigger mm -hmm. and and involves more hands and more brains to operate you have the, there's this threshold where you you have to like be able to uh not negotiate like negotiate uh certain uh, delegate yeah. that's the word yeah, yeah. delegate certain tasks you can't fight every battle no no. No. no no and trying to be uh like control of everything yeah. is also that that's a stressor too yeah. sometimes you just gotta let it go and let the wheels yeah like dude i had that i had my show recently on the 28th and then the roast on the second so i only had five days in between me producing and performing a show to me producing and performing a roast which is this was the first time second time i've ever done a roast i'm not used to this shit so I was, of course, in my mind about the whole thing, and ended up losing. But you know, it, it was it was a great it was a great time. Yeah, it was a great time we had. Well, you you did an awesome show, dude. Thanks, man. Yeah, considering it at uh at like a prominent venue like mm -hmm. the Ontario Improv, 
that's pretty dope too mm -hmm. because there's there's i've been to different uh shows to where it's not a comedy club mm -hmm. and it it's just different the the whole vibe is just different when it's at a comedy comedy club versus at a restaurant yeah like a restaurant show versus a comedy club show dude if you give me a room i'm gonna make that shit my own that's right. what i do with that's what i do with the roast room that's what i do with my shows like it, i just had my show and it was fucking amazing because um i just i i want this energy i want to kind of bring this you know we're here to fuck around we're here to have a good time we're here to just laugh and throw all that shit out the window because this is where we have our time our time to play right and that showed really good in my last show, man. Everyone was there. I brought Shang, which is a fucking killer comic, like shit talker and everything. And my shit's kind of off the rails and shit too. So, <laughs> like, it's I love to foster this sort of energy on my shows. Hell yeah! So just take it. If you get an opportunity, take it and make it your own. Yeah, that's that's one thing I tell people to do. Yeah, one hundred percent. Did you first start at like what was one of the first shows that you've produced? Like uh, on your I used, own. I used to help. I used to help produce backyard shows with my friends. Like oh, okay. Bands and shit. Oh, okay. And, and other stuff and like uh, with our podcast, the, one of the podcasts I had, we like try to integrate challenges to it, like a hot wing challenge or something, or just like just make it different. Mm -hmm. just make it different, and yeah, it's, it's one of the hardest things to do <laughs> because see, with the, especially with the with the with the roasts, it's this is pro wrestling. Yeah. This is comedy pro wrestling. Like, you right. know, so with, with C's when he first won the belt, he's like, Hey, I see where you guys are going with this. I see what you guys are doing. And I like it. Like, you know, it's just, and then more and more people are like, Oh yeah, it's, it's tongue in cheek. It's stupid, whatever you want to call it, but it's just come out and have it. It's not stupid. Well, you know, we're, we're wrestling fans. It's real to me. It's so it. real to me. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's real to me. Yeah uh so this is i guess this is a part where i ask you to you just vacate it to me right like you, I, this is where i ask him um if i could just have the belt that's you could it just have the belt? like it's like uh it's like a triple the triple h moment yeah, yeah. you remember when they when he gets the big gold belt and <laughs> yeah. uh vince mcmahon just gives him the belt and everybody him, yeah. gets pissed yeah uh, uh no <laughs> 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 this is this C's made this a fucking prestigious thing. Man. That is fucking wild, dude. Nine times. Nine times. I'm trying to get C's on the on the podcast. Get him on, dude. C's will do it. Yeah. I know me and Sandy were talking. Yeah. But you might uh, have to take a break of fucking Sandy in the butt, but he will be able to come down here and do it. <laughs> him and him and Rick too. Rick Rick's a cool guy. I, oh. I met him a couple of times. I finally got awesome. able to was able to do Rick's podcast. It's just never worked out. But uh, we had a we went to Fourth Mill after the roast battle and we had a fucking we got drunk. <laughs> I seen that dude. Well, I have to, I seen the the notification of mm. the episode, but I haven't watched it yet. Check it out, Static Hour. The Hell Static yeah. Hour by hosted by Rick Bravo. He invited me out that night to oh, go yeah. to go do it with him. But um, what 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 were we doing? Oh, you were at the campsite. Amber was camping, and I had to come pick her up. So <laughs> where'd you go camping at? Oh, uh, right here, Bonelli. Oh, I, I my parents there. were camping for the week, and oh, okay, I was popping in. Yeah, I like yeah. to go up to um, Carpinteria. Mm, okay, that place yeah. is nice. Carpinteria. Yeah, it's like up north. Yeah, it's by it's past Ventura. Yeah. Oh, dude, I love camping. Do you do uh, awesome. RV camping, trailer camping, or no. tent camping? Tent, tent camping. It's, yeah, we glamp though, basically. Yeah, stove. Oh, yeah. okay. Your uh, stove, your heated water. French and... press. <laughs> Switch setup. <laughs> yeah. We, we've we've tent camped um my entire life. Like we we've, we've always gone camping. My parents love camping. Hell yeah. And recently, was it during the pandemic? I think a year after the pandemic, they bought um uh, like an RV, like a like a bus nice. RV. Nice. So now I'm like, uh yeah. I, I can't go back. <laughs> <laughs> but then it also feels like I'm cheating. Cause, <laughs> I feel that. Because we have like a, a no. toilet and then like a king size bed. Yeah. And you're just like, yeah. ah, nature. But you're not really in nature inside. No, I refuse to rough it. Yeah? No, if I have the means, I'm fucking taking that. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> no. With a TV, dude? Hell yeah. <laughs> What's that movie that we watched with the crazy AI thing? That was wild, dude. Oh, yeah. We did watch a movie. 
Yeah. Have you ever used the AI writing a, a, a bit? No. No, no, but my uh, my boss wrote a AI poem about me. <laughs> the worst thing ever. <laughs> Is it published? No. He printed oh, okay. it out and gave it to me in the sound booth. <laughs> Piece of shit. He emails it to just oh, everybody dude, in the company. That shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The the weekly memo. Yeah. Dude, AI is just AI is crazy. Yeah. Do yeah. you use it? I don't. No. Well, no. well like like deep fakes, yeah. Oh, deep fakes? Really? Porn? Oh, okay. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what is yeah. that? I don't know about it. defakes. Like you want you don't want to see Cindy Lauper. I don't want to. <laughs> Cindy Lauper. <laughs> oh, the one where they put people's faces. Yeah, and, yeah, okay, yeah. Got it, got it, got it, yeah. got it. Who does the? Have you seen the Arnold Schwarzenegger ones? Oh my god, those are so fucking hilarious. No, no, pull them up. But do oh uh, god. come on. We got a couple more minutes. I got to show them this. These are awesome, dude. By the way. What What do I take in? Uh, go to YouTube, go to Deepfakes Arnold Schwarzenegger, please. Uh, they're freaking amazing, dude. There's this guy, he posts them like every day of different, yeah. Oh, oh, oh do that I one, the one in the guy. red, the one in the red, yeah. Brian Before Monarch, you say anything else, I want to say, no matter yes, what you've I done, know. you deserve respect, <laughs> even if you make mistakes, you're lovable. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't matter your looks, skills, age, or size, or anything. You're worthwhile. That's so crazy. No one crazy. can ever take that away from you. I mean, they're trying to help him. He runs up and he grabs one of them, man. Like a guy that big can snap a woman's neck like a pencil stick. So I fucking ran up behind him with a hatchet. <laughs> smash, smash, smash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That woman was in danger. Fuck he yeah. just finished uh, what looked like at the time killing somebody. And if I hadn't done that, he would have killed more people. Dude, that is so great. But before I say anything, yeah, dude. Great, say, yeah. no matter Isn't what that you wild? Do, you deserve respect. Yeah, yeah. That guy was a murderer. That was crazy. That guy was like running. Kyle, was he really? Kyle the Hitchhiker. Watch a watch a documentary on him. The what? guy in the red. He was he was a murderer. Yeah. Oh, and he's over here giving an interview yeah. like he was. Look like, it up. Yeah, he like killed somebody and then was on the run. And then helped out, helped out that woman that was being attacked. And then they were like, wanted to follow him. And then they found out he was fucking, he had some dirt on oh, him. Oh, yeah. shoot. Kai the Hitchhiker. In huh. plain sight. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm going to watch it. Yeah, Later. yeah. Give it give it a watch, man. Dude, sick. But, um, wow. You know what's crazy to me? And this is so stupid. This is like on the lower end of AI. But if you were to like take someone's voice, like, all right, so Slinky, um, or even Arlie Ermy, the the army man in uh, Toy Story. Toy Story? They're going to make a new Toy Story. Is it morally okay to use his voice, to, AI voice, to play that person? Like, mm. can't you sue someone or, or for that? Like, Oh, well, well that's, what, that's what some of the, um, the, you know how when Hollywood was on strike? Mm -hmm. And the actors were on strike? Was it was because thing. they were... Um, Hollywood wants to put out pretty much like for them to sign um, away their rights to their body mm -hmm. and their voice. So that way you can like, you know, do one thing and then they won't need you anymore yeah. and they'll put your body and face in mm -hmm. everything else and then you, you pretty much They are basically selling. deep fake Paul Walker in the last, yeah, uh, not in the last one, but in Fast and Furious. Look, I think if the compensation... Was place. was uh was like uh, that was okay and okay with both parties? Mm -hmm. Then I think it's fine. Yeah. Like being compensated every time your face yeah. is on screen or played in streaming platforms. If the compensation is fine, then it's okay. But we know it's the entertainment industry, and that shit won't happen. Yeah. This has been happening for years mm -hmm. in the music industry. Right. Basically, like, yeah. Uh YouTube is not paying artists. Spotify is a huge one because they're the last in the last 10 years their company has grown freaking significantly with podcasts, with music, with albums. The list goes on and on. But I think if the compensation is fine, then yeah, go ahead, do it, but the compensation is not there. So they're, these people are making pennies, fractions, mm -hmm. with thousands of plays on their music, yeah. and it it 
that's that sucks. I think if the compensation was corrected yeah. by uh, the music industry and film and TV, it would be fine. But it's not because they want to be greedy. That's going to be like a thing in written contracts now. Like you can't use my voice after I die, or if you do, you have to pay my family. Oh, yeah, yeah. like residuals. Yeah. yeah, they're doing um, scams too. So scammers are now. Um, so they so they're saying. L- let me backtrack. So they're saying that like if you get like a scam call or a call where no one's answering and you know how you're like hello hello oh, hello shit. hello you're not supposed to engage. Damn. So it should be like one like hey or something, <sighs> and then if they don't answer, you hang up. Gil. I'm the worst at that. Dude, like, I talk hey, I hello. talk straight up like what the fuck are you calling me for? Like what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. They're just they're just so, data logging. So, so they're work. yeah, they're getting your voice and then using it let let's say like they hack into something or they know you're whoever you are, right? And then um so there's been hacks where people's mom or like sibling or someone in their family calls the phone and they're like, Hey, uh, Gil, you know, yeah, uh, there's an emergency. Um, I'm on the side of the road. I need you to, you know, send me some money. Da, 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 or hey, I'm in the hospital. Blah, mm-hmm. blah blah blah. So they're saying like every time, <laughs> it kind of sucks that you have to do this. But every time that that you do that, to like hang up and then call that person. Oh, like back, like right. So like if it was like your mom or your yeah. sister, like hang up and then call them right back and then whoa because it because there's been cases where they hang up and then they call and then mom's like hey what's up and he's like Dude. uh were you on the side of the road and they're like no and they're like you just called me and they're just like no. i know someone that happened to yeah really yeah yeah and they sent money and it, like, yeah twice <laughs> twice because they thought it was their cousin yeah they're like it literally sounded like him oh my god yeah so don't answer don't engage with them don't engage mm-hmm you just, it's so hard not to though. Okay, but I'm not gonna answer if you call it. You're on the side of the road. I'm uh-huh. gonna be like, "Fuck you!" <laughs> <laughs> but it's really me on but the side of the like, road. Damn I, was it, like, uh, <laughs> I know you're AI. <laughs> yeah, call me some. Help me out here. That's crazy as fuck, dude. Oh, yeah, man. But that's gonna be the 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 challenge, dude. Figuring out like what's what's artificially um created versus yeah. reality mm-hmm. and they're really blurring the line now like yeah before you could be able to tell you were able to tell right like yeah, this now shit is it's fake now it's like, like oh. yeah because you can have like like profiles on on uh on instagram that can be totally fake yeah facebook like you can create a whole other identity mm-hmm. and it not be real Amber, weren't you just talking about like a an influencer that came out as uh, not real, like it wasn't a real person? No, she was doing oh. art. Oh, she was doing art. She was doing art, and people are mad because a lot of her art her art is beautiful, but I I I guess I don't know if you would call it her art, but yeah. she's like listed under like an artist, and then like. They're giving her an award right now for like a multidisciplinary art, and people are pissed because they're like, <laughs> "It's not real. You're not like." Yeah. But then people are saying, "Well, she does use her imagination. She types in certain things. She tweaks it. She makes it so when it's like, so it's so they're saying that it's kind of like the equivalent of like, um, what is it called? Uh, like Photoshop or things like that. Like when you don't really are drawing anything, but you're piecing things together. Right. So I, I don't know." I forgot. I think Stav Stavro said that you know before we used to use um, machines to make work easier. Now the machines are making art, and we have to work harder. Mm. It fucking blew my mind. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. What do you think about? Do you think that there there would be like what's your what's your thoughts on if there was a comic? that used AI to write jokes. So check it out. There's this podcast called Dudesy. It's with Chad Colchin and Will Sasso. You remember Will Sasso yeah. from TV? They made, and so the podcast, the concept of Dudesy is they host the show and AI creates the show. So the AI will give them prompts and they just riff on it. Well, what they did was they said, hey, uh, we want AI 
to make a Tom Brady stand-up special. <laughs> so they, the AI made a one-hour-long <laughs> stand-up special. And it is just joke after joke. No time for pauses. It's just like, hey, this is weird, right? What about this? The other day I was walking my dog, and, and it's just like no breaks. And wow. they put it out, and they sued them. They gave them a cease and desist to, to stop because they had it behind. It was on their payroll, their paywall, Patreon. And they had, what the funny thing is, one of the comments was that, Tom Brady's lawyers had to listen to this and they had to have been fucking dying because it actually is not going to lie. Pretty fucking funny. Mm. It's a, it is really funny, but it's his voice just an hour long. Wow. Of straight talking, and they got sued for that. Dang. So it was, it's possible. I dude, I wouldn't be surprised if there's open micers or stand up comics right now doing that. Really? Just having them write prompts, put in a prompt, have them write it, and then just go over there and do it. I wonder, would you be able to tell, say it, you didn't know about the this Tom Brady special and you heard it, would right. you know that it was AI generated? Only if they if they paused it, if they had break applause breaks and everything and then played it properly, probably wouldn't be able to tell. It sounds so fucking good. Really? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. And well, I, I even think like if somebody gets like a prompt or tells like like AI, hey, write me a, you know, 10 minutes get or whatever you you mm -hmm. want to put it like someone's going to rehearse it enough that they humanize it to themselves oh, yeah. there's no way like that you can really that's like reading something off the internet and you yeah. reading it like it's, right. so yeah i i bet there's people doing it yeah but the thing about stand-up is man it's you have to be genuine everything's real everything has to be real yeah you could be telling jokes you wrote but it just shows off your sense of humor because yeah. you yeah. can write stupid sillies all day yeah, but it's you. You're the one thinking of it up, mm -hmm. so you can smell when someone's bullshitting up there. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I work at the club every day. I see, I see everyone come and go, and I see who's like, dude, this guy's a genuine funny guy, and this guy's probably has someone writing for him. I wouldn't really? be surprised. And there's comics, not gonna name, that have their entire set written out, and very strict on hecklers because they will throw them off of their script and they won't be able to do it. Mm. Big right. names. Big names. Big names. Wow. Yeah. Well, there was a show that I watched on HBO. I can't think of it right now, but I watched it during the pandemic. And the lady was like a big time comedian, like mm -hmm. on the road and everything. And she had a writer. And the girl pretty much wrote the lady's like every single joke. And then the the premise of the show was like the girl finding out that she was actually the funny one and then she goes out into stand up and stuff like that. Is that the marvelous Miss Maisel? No, not that one. Okay. No, it was another one. I heard that show was great. I never watched it's it. It's really good. What season are we at, by the way? We gotta go back and watch the rest of it though. Uh, what? I don't remember. What show? Marvelous uh oh, Marvelous. Marvelous Miss Maisel. Is it good? It's really good. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Another good show about stand up is Crashing. I Pete Holmes. Seen that one yet. Oh my God, yeah. dude. I'm in what we're at episode six, seven. It's so fucking good. It's no way. Artie Ling's in there. Uh, fucking. Uh, it's really good. So Sarah Silverman's in there. It's nice, nice. it's it's a good it's Dude, a good and show. That's dude. on Max, right? Max. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It's it's like uh, I'm obsessed right now. Sick. Dude. Yeah. I'll give it a try. Or how many seasons is it? Three. I okay. heard. Yeah. I'll catch up. All right, That's Amber awesome. even likes it too. I Are you a fan of stand up? Um, I mean, yeah, I get no. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, no, I mean, not not like avid or anybody that I can like name, but I enjoy okay. laughing and going to comedy club and. That's yeah. cool. That's Amber cool. took me to my first uh, comedy show. Really? Yeah, I've always loved comedy, comedy movies. Uh, most of my favorite actors were comics. Mm -hmm. I just never put two and two together. Yeah, and I I rarely went to clubs. But Amber took me to my first club to see an open mic because oh, I was shit. I was pretty interested yeah. and I've been talking about it for a while. And she took me, and that was pretty fun. That's I dope, I witnessed what well, we went to open mics um, for about a year. Well, I went to open mics for about a year, just you know, observing, just attending, yeah, yeah, and before I even went on stage, which how was it really. the first time? Uh, the first time was it was kind of an accident because I wasn't. I went to the uh, an open mic in Pasadena. My friend was having an open mic, and he was like, "Hey, uh, 
it was more music based because Explain. he was a yeah he was a he was a musician there was no comedians there i was the only one that you know practiced stand up and he told me he was like uh my person that's supposed to be closing out the show is not here yet can you go up there and and nice. do something and i'm like i really didn't i had i had material uh in in my phone but i just never practice it of course it was my first time yeah, going up yeah. i was up there for how long amber i don't remember like 15 minutes dude. Jeez, first time nothing. first cool. time i first time I, w I was doing some crowd work yeah. i did some of the jokes that i've written i don't even use anymore yeah. it was that type of thing but it was on you bro it was fun, dude. It That's was cool. really fun. Uh, I was fucking with the crowd. It was around the time when that uh, submarine like imploded. I was yeah. talking about that. Yeah. Um, really no punches. All set up. No punches. But I was having fun, dude. I was just up there. Uh, <laughs> Were you getting laughs? I was getting laughs, oh, yeah. There you go, man. It was fun. I, I heard Rogan, like, first few years of his, his thing, he, was, he mentioned something like, it's and granted he's a veteran mm -hmm. but he said it's it's got to be hard to bomb because people are going there to laugh yeah all you need to do is make them laugh right they want to so say something funny mean it yeah and it's like and like uh, the philosophy i love is my favorite stand-up comic patrice o'neill and uh his philosophy on stand-up is that you have to have half of the room half of the room laughing and the other half horrified <laughs> and i took that shit to heart because that's how i've always been and it's like i'm gonna say some wild shit so let's have fun oh yeah dude <laughs> adrian this was fun man thanks man I appreciate it dude too. uh go ahead and and tell us where we can find you and what you got coming up you can find me on the socials at craze for days k-r-a-z-e-f-e-r-d-a-y-s on instagram that's my personal page where you can see the stuff that i'm posting the the shows that i'm promoting my daughter right there is the fucking greatest thing ever um and at roast tournament that right there is where you're gonna find not only this being defended every other month by rick and sandy but the now newly vacated roast tournament world heavyweight title this is up for grabs hit us up in the dm in our bio we have uh the applications all you do is just send us your email uh, send us a little bit of your stand-up interest and the dates that you have open because we uh, it's all on the calendar on the Ontario Improv website. We do it every other month except uh, except this uh, this open mic coming up in May. It got pushed back a week. That's factors that just happens when they when they book. But um, keep up to date on Ro at Roast Tournament at Craze for Days and the Ontario Improv website. Boom! That is it, ladies and gentlemen. At the Ontario Improv. This is, dude, this was fucking awesome, dude. I am, hell yeah. I can't believe you brought this to the studio, man. Hell yeah, man. I didn't even dude. see you walk in with it. Yep. yep. <laughs> you just pulled them out of nowhere. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. No, uh, man, this is, we're very proud, very happy what we're doing, having a lot of fucking fun. Yeah. So. I'm glad you were able to come out and see a show, man. And yeah, dude. Like, it made an impression. Yeah. yeah. I really like it, dude. Uh, dude, if you need any help, man, you got my number. Uh, hit me up, dude. I'm I'm happy to help with anything that your your projects that you're working on. I appreciate it, man. Heck yeah, dude. Um, yeah, go follow him. Every all the links are gonna be down in the show description. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, do all that good stuff. If you're if you're listening to this on Spotify, Amber and I are gonna have a um some new things coming for the Mind Buzz to where it's only gonna be available on YouTube exclusively but uh we'll see see you guys the mind buzz dude great question that was dope uh, glad you had yeah. me man yeah